Hey ghouls and creeps, I'm Britt and welcome to my channel where I do spooky DIY home and lifestyle content all year long. Today we're going to be making two throw pillows for a one throw pillow that I purchased on the Little Shop of Gore website that is the super cute no feet print paying homage to the ghost scene in Beetlejuice. I'll include a link down in the description if you're interested in purchasing the pillow to replicate what we make today. Let's get started. Because this pillow is dual sided, I figured that I could very easily take the two halves apart and use them as my new pillow fronts. Once I separated my pillow panels, I then put my pillow filler in a bag and set it aside for future use. In preparation for sewing my pillow fronts to the pillow backs, I cut the fronts edges straight so that I didn't have to replicate the curved edge on my back pieces, and then noted the new pillow dimensions for the calculations we'll be working on next. I would like to enter this segment by saying that I did not buy enough material for my borders and pillow backs, which I figured out in my first attempt at shooting this demonstration. Ultimately, I found that to get the best use of my material, I needed to cut my borders as separate pieces for not just the front, but the back as well. I would have normally had the back be all one piece rather than having to sew the back border to the back panels, but my material constraints didn't allow for that unfortunately. I'll include the piece dimensions and piece counts that I used for my pillows in the description below. After determining what I needed to cut, I got to work straightening my fabric edges and then cutting my borders, back panels, and interfacing strips. So it turned out I ended up running out of material despite my best efforts, so I used some solid black material I had in my stash for my second back panel for both pillows. To finish the edges of my pillow insert opening in the back of my covers, I folded over a half inch of material on the opening edge and then kept it in place with a strip of fusible interfacing. The interfacing also serves as a stiffener to keep the edge from getting stretched out. I then folded the material again to conceal the interfacing and later edge stitch the first fold. Thank you. 
other back panel's opening edge is easy to finish too. Simply fold the edge over twice at a half inch and later edge stitch the first fold. Important side note, be sure to leave 3 inches extended past the side edges of your panels to allow for the width the side borders will be adding later. My technique for making mitered corners is to first sew the top and bottom borders on each front and back panel. Then attach the side borders to the panels only in between the top and bottom borders. I'll later show you my corner folding trick to finish your pillow corners, so stay tuned. After edge stitching, my back panel edges, I then overlapped the edges by 3 inches and sewed along the top and bottom sides to keep the overlap in place. I cut my finished back panels to be 16 inches by 16 and 5 eighths inches to match my front panels. Then repeated the border sewing steps previously done to the front, now to the back. This method of folding your corner fabric is great for getting a nice looking corner without trimming away material that could ultimately weaken and fray your seam. Thank you. 
I then took both pillow covers and stitched in the ditch along the border and panel seam. This will keep the pillow insert in the center of your pillow, giving you that super cute floppy pillow fringe look. Now you could probably get away with purchasing two 16 by 16 inch pillow forms, but I had the muslin and batting available to be able to make two custom 16 by 16 and 5 8 inch pillow forms that will fit my covers perfectly. You guys, the pillows are done and they turned out so cute. I can't wait to show you. I love the process of taking something apart and then putting it back together in an ideally new or improved way, which made this project even more enjoyable to work on. I'm hoping this project got you thinking about your decor in an alternate way and possibly even planning for your next project. Please let me know in the comments what you're currently working on because I love to hear how you're being creative. Thank you so much for taking the time to visit my creepy craft corner of the internet. I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch, subscribe, like, and interact with the channel more than you know. Now without further ado, let's get to the grand reveal.